Item number SCP-1234 Object Class Keter Special Containment Procedures Ownership of the building housing SCP-1234, designated Site-602, is currently held by a Foundation Front Company. All other former tenants of Site-602 have been evicted. The Foundation is the liaise with local government and business interests to prevent any attempts to purchase, redevelop, or condemn Site-602. Plainclothes security personnel are to monitor SCP-1234 when inactive, to prevent unauthorized access. Electronic monitoring equipment is to be installed in SCP-1234 and throughout Site-602. Whenever monitoring indicates that an SCP-1234 event is imminent, all Foundation personnel are to evacuate Site-602. A Foundation front company, Southside Commissary Products, is to make a delivery to SCP-1234 within six hours containing at least 50 kg each of all-purpose white flour and vegetable shortening, as well as 200-400 kg of any other available products approved as per document 1234-746-C. Following conclusion of an SCP-1234 event, Foundation personnel may re-enter Site-602. All instances of SCP-1234-1 are to be identified and removed for study and disposal. All monitoring equipment is to be examined and replaced if necessary, following confirmation that SCP-1234 has been fully secured. Concurrent to re-entry, Southside Commissary Products shall canvass all purveyors of baked goods within a 5km radius of SCP-1234 and confiscate all uncontained instances of SCP-1234-1. In the event that a delivery is not made by the time SCP-1234 enters active phase, mass distribution of amnestics to the civilian population is authorized, and Procedure Queen of Hearts may be enacted as necessary at 05 discretion. Description. SCP-1234 is the former premises of Smith's Swiss Pastries, a bakery and tea room that operated in Chicago, Illinois from 1947 to 2003. The interior of SCP-1234 remains fully furnished and possesses working electricity, hot and cold running water, and natural gas. SCP-1234's ovens and kitchen equipment remain fully functional, though appearing to be in a severe state of disrepair due to age and neglect. All attempts to remove or disconnect SCP-1234's kitchen equipment or utilities have been unsuccessful. Under normal circumstances, SCP-1234 is inert. On an irregular basis, ranging from an absurd minimum of 2 days to an absurd maximum of 17 months 12 days, SCP-1234 becomes active. Prior to becoming fully active, SCP-1234 exhibits a warm-up period lasting from 12 to 36 hours. Phenomena indicating the onset of an SCP-1234 event includes Heavy electromagnetic fluctuations within a 100-meter radius of Site-602 Interference and malfunctioning of monitoring equipment Electrical blackouts and brownouts on the city block Site-602 is located on Lights and electrical devices within SCP-1234 activating and deactivating spontaneously. Unexplained disappearances of humans and animals within a 300-meter radius of Site-602. SCP-1234 will become fully active within no more than 36 hours of the commencement of the warm-up phase. To date, active phase has always initiated between the hours of 2300 and 0330 local time. Once fully active, SCP-1234's windows become fully opaque, all doors and windows become completely impenetrable, and all monitoring equipment located within SCP-1234 ceases to function. All attempts to enter SCP-1234 during an active phase have failed, and no persons inside SCP-1234 when an active phase commences have been found alive at its conclusion. Active phase have been documented to last from 4 to 10 hours but will always conclude by 0900 local time. Upon conclusion of active phase, the shelves, counters, tables, and display cases of SCP-1234 will have been stocked with approximately 200 to 500 freshly baked shortbread crust pies designated SCP-1234-1. 
All instances of SCP-1234-1 measure 22.8 cm in diameter and weigh approximately 0.75 kg each. Pies produced by SCP-1234 will make use of any biological ingredients provided to it, whether living or not at time of event, including fruits and vegetables, non-edible plants, insects, fish, poultry, red meat, and human beings. SCP-1234 will not, however, make use of any ingredients that are spoiled, stale, or are of unsatisfactory condition for use in baking. Instances of SCP-1234-1 will not be recycled into new instances when a new event begins. All instances of SCP-1234-1 are, at time of discovery, cooled to room temperature, contained in a disposable aluminum pie plate, and covered with a transparent plastic lid. Aside from the means by which they are produced, SCP-1234-1 bears no anomalous properties and may be eaten safely providing that the events used in its manufacture are safe to eat. On 17 occasions since observation began, instances of SCP-1234-1 have been found outside SCP-1234 following conclusion of active phase. On all such occasions, the pies were found on the shelves of supermarkets, convenience stores, and other food vendors within a 5km radius of SCP-1234, and had been labeled with a UPC readable by the vendor's point-of-sale system. No determination had been made as to how the pies were transported from SCP-1234 to the locations where they were found. If there is not a sufficient supply of ingredients available within SCP-1234 when active phase commences, SCP-1234 will consume ingredients stored outside itself. Flour, shortening, and other biological matter is relocated into SCP-1234, beginning with the closest matter available and being attracted from an increasingly greater distance until the necessary amount of ingredients have been acquired. The means by which material is acquired or transported into SCP-1234 is unknown. Due to the population density of the area in which SCP-1234 is located, no uncontained events have been allowed to occur since containment began. Foundation containment of SCP-1234 began in 2006, following several reports of dozens of persons and animals disappearing within the downtown Chicago area. Local police traced the disappearances to the neighborhood in which SCP-1234 is located. Upon noticing an unusual scent emanating from the abandoned storefront now identified as SCP-1234, police breached the front door and discovered approximately 7,300 instances of SCP-1234-1 within, many of which were several months old and had spoiled. When police attempts to determine the identity of the person responsible reached a dead end, a police liaison contacted the Foundation which assumed jurisdiction and, following an additional event which resulted in several more disappearances, placed SCP-1234 under containment. Interviews with persons who worked at SCP-1234 prior to 2003 and with the previous owners of Site-602 stated that the cause of its closing abruptly in April of that year was not known to them, and that they had never observed any unusual or anomalous events occurring within the property prior to 2006.